Welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Ellen Dunham-Jones, and I am the director of the Georgia Tech Master of Science in Urban Design. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to our virtual open house. I hope that you watched our fall video where Professor Dagenhart, uh, who's and lecturer and MSUD alum, Joel Jassu, and I discussed what urban design is, what urban designers do, and the program, the curriculum of the program here at Georgia Tech. It's on, that video is on the MSUD website and the MSUD YouTube channel if you haven't already watched it. Today, we thought it would be more useful to you to hear from several of the students about their experiences here. Why do they feel they made the right choice in last, last year when they were in your shoes in selecting Georgia Tech? And is Georgia Tech the right fit for you? Feel free to post questions in the chat throughout the students' rapid fire presentations, and we'll get to them as part of the Q&A for the second half of this hour. So to kick it off, I've asked a few students to present some highlights from this year. So uh, Devaki, if you want to share your screen, and Shima, if you want to tell us about the fall studio. I have architecture background, so uh, I'm going to tell you my experience from architecture to urban design and some highlights about the fall studio. Uh, in urban design, you just uh, you uh, work on large scale project and you don't work on a limited area like uh, architecture, but you work uh, within the whole city, surrounding fields, watershed, and streets, and you have uh, communication with a broader range of professionals. Um, can you go to the next slide? So, um, if next slide, please. Yes. Okay. So in Fall Studio, uh, uh, in Fall Studio, my experience was to think uh, think broader uh, in terms of environment, economy, equity, and in terms of water management and housing affordability, and also um, uh, thinking far-sighted because the project is not for the next two or three years. It's for uh, the next uh, longer future for, for example, 20 years to 30 years. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, our fall uh, studio was a correlation between land, water, and city, and having um, them uh, work together uh, and work well together to um, uh, develop a better uh, place for people who are living uh, in the city. Uh, next slide. This is our study area as you can see it's a real it was a really huge site it had uh, different kinds of fields landfills brown fields water uh, creeks streams so uh, we uh, learned how to um, make them cor um, correlate together and have um, all the uh, area connected to uh, together uh, next slide please so um, in most um, in um, most cases we use our hand drawings uh, throughout the semester. Uh, so uh, in plans and perspectives. Uh, next slide. But next slide. But uh, we also had uh, working with computers. So if you uh, if you think you need uh, to enhance your skills in hand drawings and computers, it will be useful for you before the starting of the program. Next slide. Uh, and also, this is our um, the whole design uh, of the fall studio. Um, it was a really great experience for me because um, it was the first time I had I worked on a, a really huge site like this, and I think uh, of uh, many um, many um, factors like. Um, housing, economy, uh, equity, and all of this. And also, uh, he, you can see a link uh, from um, um, Georgia Tech Architecture uh, College of Design. Uh, that uh, you can see the whole project uh, in this link uh, from the portfolio competition section. And yes, this was a really brief thing from our Paul Studio. Thank you. 
Thank you, Shima. You're welcome. Okay, so Dishandra, tell us about the ULI project, which was at the start of the spring semester. Hi, everyone. My name is Dishandra. I'm from Kolkata, India. And I'll introduce uh, the ULI High Student Competition. Uh, all the students in the MSUD program are are required to participate in this competition in the beginning of spring uh, semester. This year's project was uh, in Oakland, California, and the key considerations were equity, housing affordability, access to neighborhood services, sustainability, and connectivity to the surroundings. Next slide, please. Uh, I'll just share uh, one of the proposals. I uh, was the team leader in this project and we got an honorable mention. Our project uh, was uh, a means to be repair the damages caused by the interstate system in America to communities of people of color. Uh, I would like to point out that this competition is such an enriching experience for us all because we get to work and collaborate with multidisciplinary uh, teams wherein for example my team had students from mcd but also from master of city planning master of architecture master of real estate development and master of high performance building and all of these uh, disciplines come together in a single project at the urban scale um, and as we see we go through contextual analysis research and we get into a design we analyze that design in terms of its performance in terms of its real estate value and then we present a vision for the project next slide please and so one of the key learning experiences was we really know how to pay for the social good that we design that we envision by working with the financial lead and i'm happy to report that georgia tech has a record of winning 15 placements in the past few years and no other university can uh, compete with that. So uh, if you are here, it will be a great opportunity for you to learn in a very short amount of time. It's just two weeks, but you will really take away a lot from this competition. Great. Karunya, tell us about the spring. Uh, the slide is not changed here. Uh, can you go to the Spring Studio slide, please? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Karunya, and I'm going to give some key highlights of the Spring Studio that we are currently working on this semester. Uh, the studio is a very unique one in the sense uh, it brings together students from urban design and high performance building background to collaborate on uh, producing one single urban design scheme and modeling its performance. So uh, we're currently learning not only uh, you know, how to produce a sustainable resilient development, but also to producing a, a very compelling evidence based resilient design that uh, is being supported by modeling and quantification of its performance uh, by high performance building students. Next slide, please. So uh, we're working on a few sites along uh, East Memorial Drive in DeKalb County, Georgia. And this corridor mainly connects Atlanta with a very famous uh, tourist attraction called Stone Mountain. And the brief is for us to develop a design scheme and retrofitting this uh, currently sprawling corridor into a high performing one. Next one, please. Uh, so we started off with a great field trip, uh, spent a whole day on our sites, and uh, we were very lucky to be supported by the DeKalb County during our visit. We got some great uh, feedback and input from them. In fact, at the end of the semester, we will be producing a publicly available comprehensive report to assist the commissioners and the local community with retrofitting this corridor. Next slide, please. Of course, the field trip ended on a very high note with all of us ending up in a very authentic Ethiopian restaurant and we got a great flavor of the local community and their food too. Next slide, please. So over the last few weeks, uh, we analyzed the site context. Next. Developed an urban framework at a regional scale. Next. And a framework at a site scale too. Next which gradually translated into an illustrative plan with regulatory plan. Next slide. Which is being reinforced with performance analysis of various aspects, uh, which we have been, uh, we have been getting some help from the high performance building students. Next slide. 
uh, and we also generated a few before after images reflecting our vision. Next slide. Also, we were very thrilled to propose some tactical urbanism strategies as uh, low cost, short term implementable actions on site. Next slide. So we had a midterm review just a week back. Uh, we got some great feedback from some industry experts and the stakeholders. And the big takeaway so far in the semester has been, uh, you know, integrating the existing and proposed features into a master plan, which is high performing. Uh, we learned a new software uh, like UMI to model the performances of a proposal and other sustainability metrics. And most importantly, we improved our skills at working in a multidisciplinary team. Fantastic. All right. So it's not all work. Devaki, tell us, show us some of the highlights of you know just being being social, being a person, having friends. <laughs> Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Devaki. Uh, I joined the MSUG program last year in fall 2021. And so while these guys spoke about our wonderful academic experiences, I'll talk about what is our life outside studio. So we started off with um, our beautiful uh, welcome uh, dinner in Ellen's house and uh, where we got to know each other we had some delicious food we met with uh, students from phd and also we met our professors in a context outside the studio and we just had some really nice conversations and fun. and of course on campus we are welcomed by buzz and um, we this is one of the very early pictures where we all look very happy because we just got some free food on campus. And uh, there are many events by SOA like this one um, where uh, Aishwarya is selling some of her artwork. And um, there are events hosted by EQIA, which is uh, Equity in Architecture, uh, where they, they do field trips, they do um, hosting a lot of events and recreation uh, options like uh, here you see Atulia playing badminton. Uh, and also the salsa club that I was a part of, which is a lot of fun. And um, also basketball games. Um, and GT took us to Six Flags, uh, as well as the Georgia Aquarium. Uh, so apart from all this, like all these organized events on campus, uh, what do the MSUDs do outside our studio and outside our course? So we uh, sort of have a lot of these uh, events where we just party together. Uh, we try to embrace the local culture. So we will be, these are some few uh, pictures from Halloween. Uh, and this is from Thanksgiving where um, the Shadra hosted a dinner and invited all of us to his place. And um, so it's not all about like we don't have a lot of time uh, at hand uh, to just uh, be partying. It's we really make time uh, as design students to do all of this. So, so even after reviews, uh, we we are very uh, sleep deprived. But we just go out after our reviews and spend time together. And um, these are just some pictures from post review times and this is from the Ethiopian restaurant that Karunia spoke about. Um, so there are these nice hangout spots on GT campus and we have these slumber parties and small team parties after after our class. And um, this is a scene from us walking together after our theory class. That was our, one of our best classes in fall 2021. And um, we, we really realized that that's, that's one of the times when we walked back from night class that we really got to bond and get together and uh, talk about something. So thank you. Uh, I hope you got a good sense of what life is like out, outside studio and um, Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Devaki. I didn't even know you guys were partying that much. <laughs> it's, it's great to see. All right, let's, we're gonna shift topics and I'm gonna, I've asked a number of students just give us one minute each on kind of 
like what was their favorite elective course and maybe give a brief mention to one of the required courses that was a favorite but you know really this is just a quick chance to learn about the electives what were some of your favorites jenny lynn landscape architect give us tell us about you hey good morning my name is jenny lynn rudder i'm from atlanta um, my undergraduate is at bla from UGA, um, and I'm actually a practicing landscape architect, like Ellen said, with Star White House. Um, my favorite elective was actually an independent study, but it happened in an interesting way. Last spring, I took uh, Perry Yang's urban ecological design class, and I was introduced to this part of campus that turns out is part of this really large watershed. And there are all these innovative ideas about what to do with that. And so I just got this like little taste of it then. And I realized I needed to learn GIS and I wanted to learn more about this watershed. The so last summer I took a GIS class as one elective and an independent study as the other. And I was able to put together this really great um, understanding of basically half of campus and how water works through it, how we can use urban design theories to slow um, it, it's really a water thing that I was focusing on. So it's how to slow the impact of storms on the combined sewer system. And it was just fascinating. Got to meet all these interesting people and really improved my skills. So that was my favorite. Fantastic. Okay, Lubin, tell us about your independent study and you, and yourself. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Lubin. And behind me is Virginia Highlands. It's one of the places in Atlanta that I like. Um, and you may get to visit if you come here. Um, it's a really cool neighborhood. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about my independent study experience. So, you know, we did all did kind of independent studies in the summer, or Jenny Lynn and, and our cohort. Um, and I decided to do uh, something that built on my a uh, little bit of my coding skills and was more like traditional research where I was trying to quantify. Um, shape. Um, it was more a, a, a quantifiable project in, in the sense of, of trying to be more scientific, but it was a lot of fun. I mostly did it to um, get kind of my feet wet uh, with a new topic and with the new skill that I had just started, which was coding in Python. Um, and I took two semesters to do it, um, not because uh, you have to, but because I wanted a longer period of time to uh, focus on the study. So I just split it in half. Um, that's something that you might consider a long time you know, from now whenever you get to that point. Um, as for my favorite required course and my favorite elective, uh, my favorite elective, let's start with that, was uh, media and modeling. It actually started me on a series of media and modeling classes. It's where I first got introduced to 3D modeling and a lot of like the visualization software that I would then later be using. And I took that um, class even while I was doing the planning program at Tech, which is what I what I came um, from. Uh, I did the planning program and then I did the uh, MSUD. So that was my favorite elective and I went on to, to get into scripting from that class. Um, as for my favorite required course, I mean, it's really a close tie between uh, theory and history of urban form, but I really, I really enjoy history of urban form just because of the, there's really some fascinating historical material that Richard has put together, um, you know, kind of illustrating how cities have developed over time and the reasons why and different elements of the city that make it work kind of as a system, um, and, I, and I love that, so. That's a little bit about me, and I'm excited to see you guys. Um, good luck. Thank you. All right, Dishadra. You're muted. I think we all are spoiled with elect the choices that we get, and uh, every time it's a hard thing to not take all of them. But I will uh, throw light on uh, some electives that I took, which were urban, introduction to urban analytics, introduction to GIS, environmental GIS. Uh, here we actually work with data uh, like Yelp data, Twitter data, City Bikes data. We try to visualize them uh, and draw conclusions for, uh, by geocoding them and draw urban conclusions from them. And in GIS, we again uh, visualize and analyze uh, racial data, economic data, environmental data, flooding issues. All of these things which are, and we quantify them so that it is just, uh, 
it is quantifiable it is we are we can use this information to support our design and uh, another required subject i would like to touch on is uh, real estate and basic finance which as you saw in the eula heights competition we designers all of us had basic knowledge about how uh, a performer is worked out and i'm i'm uh, i'm going to show you that it really helps you think more um, logically when you design and uh, support with that knowledge that you gain terrific okay shima um yes um i took smart cities as my elective uh in this course um, uh, we had uh, our main focus was to integrate system uh, design system science and urban design and uh, our site was uh, Atlanta's airport. We uh, were divided into several groups. Each group worked on uh, one aspect of this airport uh, in terms of energy, mobility, and GIS. So um, we uh, all, the whole class worked on uh, one project, but uh, with different perspectives. So uh, it was really helpful uh, to have this uh, combination together and also uh, the next semester, uh, the continuation of this course is uh, in urban ecological design. That is a required course, and um, uh, you can uh, ha you have the choice that uh, you work on the same site on Atlanta's airport or uh, you um, shift to um, campus uh, as your site. Uh, but uh, it was really helpful um, in terms of um, if you uh, if you like to work on uh, ecology and um, energy. Uh, so yeah, this was uh, the elective and the required course that I took. Great. And Luke. Hi, my name is Luke Hyun Son. I'm also majoring in urban design. My favorite course electives course is retrofitting Serbia. Uh, let me talk about retrofitting Serbia briefly. Retrofitting Serbia, this class is electives course in second semester in MSUD program. Also Professor Ellington and Jones lead this course. <laughs> and this class is very interesting class because in this class you will learn specific retrofitting Serbia strategies such as road diet, improving public health, supporting aging population, social capital, etc. You guys will learn the method that is able to retrofitting retrofit urban plus suburbia. I strongly recommend this class for you guys. Great. Thanks so much. All right, we're going to shift gears a little bit now, and I'm going to talk a little about financial aid, research and job opportunities. Paying for grad school is difficult. We know that. I wish it wasn't so expensive. I wish we had many more fellowships and research positions to offer, but we just don't. It's, we're lim I have a very limited number of one semester GRA slots. A GRA is a, GRA, a graduate research assistantship um, so the, the few that I have are to work on the Redesigning Cities video podcast series. And it's actually a fun, it's pretty fun work. Uh, the GRA ship covers tuition and comes with a $20 an hour stipend in exchange for 15 hours of work per week. And so that's, and that's usually, you know, working with me. Um, it's difficult in the first semester for incoming brand new students to get a GRA ship with another faculty member who doesn't know you yet. But that's also where the electives can come in, where you get to know another faculty member who, may, if they have any research that can help to sponsor you uh, with, a, with a GRA. Uh, but the fact is some MSUDs have been successful at translating their skills and passions into spring semester GRA ships. Sakshi Nanda uh, has a passion for photography and she built up relationships with two faculty members who one of who has received a GRA ship to work um, on with using drones to do thermal imaging for the 
a high performance building professor and to do photogrammetry records, really detailed uh, record drawings that you can build from the photographs uh, with a historian professor. So, you know, you just have to get creative and you sometimes have to work at it to be able to get another, get a GRA ship. Um, also in the spring, I don't, we can, I can't guarantee that it'll be offered next spring, but for the, this spring and last spring, the School of Architecture has been offering teaching assistant jobs. These do not provide a tuition waiver, but they pay a $20 an hour stipend for 10 hours of work a week. Uh, and many of you have professional architecture degrees and so are really extremely well qualified for those TA ships and several of uh, the current MSUDs have those t some of those TA ships. There are also quite a lot of on-campus jobs available, often at a lower pay rate. Uh, but it, it, several students have found jobs working in the library, in a lab, or in the in the print shop, um, even in the Georgia Tech Police Department. You know, just just as a way to make some extra cash. Also, many of the MRCs, the, of the M Master of Architecture students, fewer of the MSUDs, but there are jobs available if, and folks are sometimes working off campus. Again, for a maximum of 20 hours a week while doing their studies. There's also a possibility for MSUDs to do the same once they're past the visa restrictions, but it, sometimes means taking an extra semester to complete all the credits. The students who work off campus often find they're getting stretched um, a little thin and so they'll stretch out their program. I also have a very small amount of fellowship funds. Those are grants without a work requirement that generally are distributed to students in extreme circumstances. Most students obviously, I think, and take out loans to cover their education. To help you pay off those loans, we do also help you find a job after graduation. And so we hold a big career fair in the spring. It was so big this year, it had to move to the basketball arena. I mean, we just couldn't fit in the, there were so many firms eager to hire Georgia Tech students. Uh, we also have, I think, a terrific program in the spring called Practicum, where uh, both architecture and urban design graduate students have the uh, opportunity to do a mini one-week internship in a major urban design firm somewhere else in the country. We generally try to get folks out of Atlanta to help build your network, try some other, try living in some other places for a week. So this year we had students in California at the offices of Peter Calthorpe, renowned urban designer, at Opticos, the firm that coined the term missing middle. We had um, several students interning at Perkins and Will's offices, different offices, both in Charlotte and in Austin, Texas. We also had McCann, McCann Adams office in Austin. Tordy Gallus in Washington, D.C., uh, WXY in New York City, and it, we did have one student who was in Atlanta um, at HKS, and she'll talk about that experience in a minute. These days, Richard and I are both also getting a lot of phone calls from firms looking to hire our graduates. So we both, Richard and I, have, a, have very strong networks amongst urban design firms and we constantly are connecting MSUD students to employers, at least within the US. We don't have quite as many contacts outside of the US, except through those big international firms. So I want to um, turn it now to uh, Olivia to talk about her GRA ship. She has a GRA ship with the Georgia Conservancy, which is a really terrific uh, one-year local, a GRA ship, but actually working technically for Richard, but working with a nonprofit organization just off of campus. Welcome, Olivia. 
Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Olivia Harrell. I am from Savannah, Georgia. Um, I currently hold a Bachelor of Architecture from Kennesaw State University. Um, and as Ellen said, I briefly, you know, have the pleasure of introducing introducing the graduate research assistantship with the Georgia Conservancy. Um, I am allowed to work from home on campus or in the office. Um, they're pretty flexible, but be sure to communicate um, with your coworkers um, about your schedule, assignments, projects that you might have at Tech. Um, for me, I personally enjoy doing research, so I assist with um, initial research for presentations, um, development projects that we have across the state of Georgia. Um, last semester, we had a project out in downtown Lithia Springs, which is about 30 minutes west of campus. Um, and this semester, I have assisted on a few projects, um, including a housing development project in Screven County, which is in South Georgia, around my hometown, and also the mayor's clinic. So that's pretty much what I have for the Georgia Conservancy. Thank you. Pretty exciting. Thanks, Olivia. Karina, tell us about being a TA and, and your practicum experience. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Karina. I'm originally from Brazil. And as Alan was saying, uh, when they opened the assistantship positions for the spring, I was chosen to work with Professor James Kramer in the entrepreneurship and professional practice class, which I absolutely recommend to everyone in school. And I've been helping him with creating content for the class, uh, tech support, and communicating with both the students and the guest lectures that we have, grading, and everything that relates to the class. It's been really, really rewarding. I enjoy this side of the profession related to business and leadership, and it's been helping me improve my leadership skills, communication skills, and really create connections with other students from Georgia Tech especially because most of the students in the class are from the Master of Architecture. Uh, for the practicum program, I was actually on site with the Street Plans Collaborative. They're from Miami, but they were working on a project in Livermore, California. And it's a tactical urbanist proposal for East Avenue. I was able to participate with them in a meeting with stakeholders and a public workshop where the community was able to share their ideas. It was really Amazing. It was just one day for me, different from the other people that were actually in offices as they were traveling, but it was really rewarding and I definitely recommend that. Fantastic. Azulia, tell us about your practicum. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, um, firstly, congratulations on being accepted to Georgia Tech. Um, and I'm Atulia, and I'm an MSUD candidate here. And um, so I'm gonna talk about my experience at um, the, the spring practicum, which was uh, offered during the spring break. And I had the opportunity to work with uh, HKS Atlanta, which is an architecture and urban design firm. And um, so, yeah, uh, I was their first extern uh, at HKS and so, they had really crafted a rich uh, schedule for me over the week, and I had the opportunity to meet uh, different people from different sectors of the firm and understand the kind of projects they're working on and um, also um, meet all these people and build relationships and connections, which I think is key. Uh, because uh, you may seem that you might think that one week is like a short week, but that's actually to build relationships, which would take you forward from there on and convert it into like a part-time or a full-time job. So, I, so we did a lot of things uh, over the week, which was very engaging. Uh, I happened to sit on a design fellowship meet wherein I got to see um, the kind of research topics and ideas that um, HKS was uh, helping recent grad students to work on. So that was an interesting um, opportunity for me to sit on and listen to. And um, I also had the opportunity to share uh, our studio project with uh, the cities and communities team, which was the urban design team. And um, they gave me a lot of good feedback for my project. So that was an amazing way for me to showcase what we are doing uh, at Georgia Tech as well. Um, and then um, on the second day, uh, we had this Phoenix Flies preservation tour wherein we toured along Midtown and um, 
I had the opportunity to sort of look at uh, HKS's projects on the way along Midtown. So that was a good way to look at their projects. Uh, and um, I also had the opportunity to go for the AIA Advocacy and Housing uh, event. And that was a great way to uh, um, network with all these architects who were working and also these esteemed uh, panel uh, people who were there. Um, uh, that was a good uh, day too, was an amazing day. And, uh, and then uh, I had the opportunity to work on a project, uh, which I'm not allowed to mention since it's confidential, but I was able to um, create these GIS base maps for the, for the project and help them with connectivity and just uh, on site level and regional level scale. So I also had the opportunity to see how uh, these different levels of uh, the firm integrate and work together and on the last day, it was um, the day I had to say goodbye. And uh, typically, uh, the office has like a huddle meet. And so I was hosting the huddle, and um, I had gotten a topic for them to discuss. And it was a really good way to see how uh, HKS as a firm works together as a family. Because uh, all these four days, I was seeing how the uh, work, firm works professionally with all these different levels or, uh, and understand what all these different levels of integration are. And the final day was to see how they were uh, as a family and they shared all their experiences and what they do outside of office. So it was an amazing experience. And I would highly recommend um, the externship practicum program to anybody who's taking the Georgia Tech. Fantastic. All right, I'm gonna now shift to talking about, you know, the part of the point of practicum is to help students build their networks. And, you know, our students, uh, get a lot of jobs, and I'm going to talk about kind of the work after the MSUD. We all know that the global population is rapidly urbanizing. Urban design is a growing field, and the market is especially hot right now, especially in the U.S., but also around the globe. Our program is STEM accredited, so international students can work for three years in the U.S., and most of them do. Those firms that they work for then fall in love with the students and often sponsor them for H-1B visas to stay on even longer. Most of the uh, MSUD alums work for private sector consultants, but also, many also go into public sector design and work for planning departments. Quite a few go on to do PhDs and work and um, so, you know, we're, and then really work in academia. And more and more are setting up their own consulting or even real estate development firms from Kathmandu to Atlanta, Savannah, and Washington, D.C. Now, in some cases, uh, MSUD grads join firms that primarily focus on whatever their first professional degree was in. But within that architecture, landscape, civil engineering, or planning firm, they become the urban designer within that firm. So they may be designing complexes of buildings, public spaces, streets, or entire neighborhoods. Having urban design as well as their professional degree makes them very sought after by both global, international, large practices, and smaller firms. However, most of the MSUD grads join firms that either have a distinct urban design group or that focus entirely on urban design. Many work for big global firms. We have a particularly strong connection to Perkins & Will, one of the largest firms in the, in the world, uh, because our alums have risen to lead their urban design program globally. Um, so, and we have several, a lot of alums at per different Perkins and Will offices in Atlanta, in San Francisco, in London, in Shanghai. Uh, in Atlanta, also the Port John Portman's office. Portman is a Georgia Tech alum. We have uh, uh, MSUD students working on urban design there. Also with Jacobs in San Francisco, Gresham Smith in Louisville, AECOM in Abu Dhabi, Atkins in India, RCOP in Pakistan and the big Chinese institutes in Tongji, Beijing, Shanghai. The folks working in big firms tend to work on very large master planning projects, integrating high performance innovations around the world. Other students work for much smaller 
urban design firms, such as Dover Cole in Miami, fantastic firm, as well as in, in places like, Ber we have alums in Berlin, in Paris, in Austin, in Charleston, and in numerous Atlanta firms. The smaller firms generally work that much more in their local region and often really excel in community engagement and the local placemaking. But as I said, on the other hand, several alums work for the public sector, including working in various cities, planning departments or business improvement districts. But we also have students who are working for international organizations and nonprofits, UN Habitat, both working in Nairobi and in Jordan, the World Bank and Dubai's World Expo. And as I said, also, we also have C Every year, there's always a, a couple of MSCDs who pursue an academic career and go and are pursuing PhDs at excellent universities, MIT, Cambridge, the ETHA in Singapore, Cornell, UT Austin, Northeastern, and we have actually uh, four MSCDs who are pursuing PhDs, actually one just graduated, so we, we only, we have three right now at Georgia Tech, but um, have had a total of four. So lots of future job opportunities. So now I want to invite attendees to throw out some questions. Um, please post some questions in the chat, and I'll start with a first question. We have Robin Tucker here who is our academic advisor. And I know, Robin, that one of the questions many students are, you're getting peppered with is, when will I get my visa? How do I get my I-20? Tell us, give us some advice. Okay. Welcome to all of you who've been accepted. We hope to see you soon in Atlanta, and we are working just as rapidly as we can to begin the I-20 process so that you will have that in order to um, apply for your visa. Um, we have to wait each year until the Office of International Education here gives us the go-ahead to be able to start processing fall I-20s. That has just happened, so I'll be starting on those hopefully by later this afternoon and tomorrow. That does not mean that every one of you will receive your email today. Um, it will be through the week next week. The other thing that we have to wait for is that the Office of Graduate Admissions has to process you completely through our student system and roll you over to, from applicant to student before I can access the correct forms to send you your I-20 request. You need to be looking in your email for an email from the iStart system. That's where you, you will respond with your documents to us. The Office of International Education will then take those and process those and contact you when the I-20 is ready. Um, something that's fairly new, we've had it for a couple of years, is an electronic I-20, which means that you don't necessarily have to wait until an I-20 is mailed over to you. And I know, you know, that's an issue in some countries. Um, it delays the process for you a bit. So I'm happy about the electronic process so that you can get your I-20 pretty quickly. You will need your SEVIS number off of that I-20 in order to be able to make your appointment for your uh, visa interview. Um, so I would say keep an eye out for the iStart email and just know that sometimes because this is coming from an automated system, those find their way into your spam or your clutter box. So keep a check over there for the next little bit as well until you see that email. Um, if you have questions once you receive that, I would encourage you to reach out to the Office of International Education rather than to me or to Nitra Wisdom, who may have been in conversations with you. The reason for that is once we turn that process over by sending you that I start email, the process itself is pretty much out of our hands on our side of the fence. Um, so it's a much more, it's a much more efficient way to get answers to your questions if you ask the Office of International Education. Now just realize there's, they're really processing literally thousands of these right now. And so it may be a minute, a day or two before you hear back from them. Um, if you just are not getting a response, please reach out to one of us. 
We do not know their timeline. They have a workflow in their office and it just depends on when your I-20 and documents that you put in the system get to them. It, it gets, gets in a workflow. And so the sooner you do that, obviously the sooner they'll get to yours. Um, but we don't have a sense of the time frame. They do have a way to um, sort those a bit into various countries. And believe me, they are keenly aware daily about the visa wait times in each country. So they know how quickly you must have that in order to get your visa to be here by fall. Um, and during the summer, we'll be sending out more information. Don't get panicky if you don't hear from us for a bit. It's coming. We just have to wait until schedules are in place so that we can see what to advise you about as far as registering for coursework. You won't register until very near the time classes begin in August. But since you're a grad student, we will help you get into the courses you need. I know as an undergrad, sometimes you have to worry about, I've got to register really quick because I need a seat in a particular class. Between Ellen and Richard and all the other instructors that know you're coming, know what you absolutely need, we're going to make sure you get what you need. So don't panic about that. Um, we'll be back in touch. And of course, you can always reach out to Nitra or to me. We can answer, either of us can answer the question. She just happened to have another commitment this morning. Um, so you got me. Um, but at any rate, um, hopefully I-20s will go smoothly. Other questions can be answered. And we really want to see you in Atlanta soon. Robin, we, we joke a little bit that Robin has a magic wand. <laughs> Robin is able to sprinkle fairy dust. We don't know where she gets it from. But Robin will soon be your best friend. She makes, <laughs> she really does help get everybody here on time and into the classes that they want to take. So. Yep. Um, another question that I know often comes up is housing. Where should students, so okay, I, I decided I do want to come to Georgia Tech. Students, what advice do you have for how students should pick and choose where to live. Shima, why don't you give a, start us off? Yes, I'm living on campus in Graduate Living Center, and uh, I definitely recommend it to uh, anyone who wants to live closer to campus uh, and um, who wants to have their own uh, room. Uh, because uh, if you want to have uh, your own room and not share with anyone, uh, it's um, I think it's um, the best way because it's um, it has a lower cost than um, off campus houses, and also because it's uh, so close to campus, it's uh, safe and uh, it's really convenient for me. I really recommend it. You can find uh, more information on Georgia Tech website and see uh, pictures. Um, but I'm really satisfied with living uh, on campus. So, and also because the I think because the rents are uh, going uh, are are increased recently. So uh, it's not uh, like the past that uh, it was more expensive than living off campus. So uh, yeah, you can find more information in Georgia Tech website. Devaki, you're living off campus. Give us that. Why did you choose off campus? Um, so uh, I was looking to share a room with uh, some of the other students. So uh, I'll just tell you what the rents are like right now for uh, off campus housing. So typically for a 2 BHK, it's around 2200 to 2500, 2600, that range. Uh, and for uh, a 1 BHK, it's around 1500 to 1800. So, um, like Shima said, if you want a single room, it, it is uh, better that you choose on com campus housing because it's much more affordable. But if you are okay with sharing a room, then uh, it becomes much, much more. It becomes, becomes almost half the price if you choose to stay off campus. And there are a lot of options in Midtown uh, as well as West Midtown, um, uh, many apartments. Uh, that uh, we all looked at before coming here. So if 
you have like any further questions or any specific place you can uh, feel free to contact me or reach out to me regarding that. And I personally, so I live uh, four miles from campus and I bike there every day. I do arrive at school a little sweaty, but then I have the excuse to eat cookies. So I'm very happy with, with that. But I really do recommend trying to live close enough that you can either walk or bike. Traffic in Atlanta is terrible. And yet faculty are not sympathetic if you say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late to class. I got caught in traffic. Of course you're going to get caught in traffic. We know you, know, you, you need to plan around that. So um, I definitely recommend trying to live relatively close. And hey, if I can bike four miles a day, you know, each way, so can you. <laughs> Anyone else have any comments about housing? They want to add? Ellen? I will yes. say that sometimes we're able to make some connections for students um, who are looking for housing. I cannot release emails, for instance, of incoming students or current students to an applicant, but if they want to write up what they're looking for um, in a roommate, what kind of apartment, what kind of housing situation they really would like to have. I'm happy to distribute that to all of the MSUD students, all of the grad students, um, you know, however you would like me to distribute it. And sometimes we're able to make connections for you with possibly someone from your home country or um, with a student you know, who is an MSUD who would be going through and have about a, a similar type of schedule. I can also share your write up for what you would like with the other incoming MSUD students, because I know, you know, the MSUD is fairly short and a lot of times you get to Atlanta and there aren't a lot of these guys that are here now still here. Um, but we can make some connections for you if you want to reach out to Nature or I um, and let us know what you're looking for. We'll post that. Well, I want to now, I'd like to encourage everyone to turn on their screens because you guys po posted a lot of great background shots of kind of some of your favorite places. And let's just do a quick round robin of, you know, what are those places that you chose um, chose to pick? So, Dashadra, where where are you? <laughs> Oh, you're muted. I am at Club Commons and I like this place a lot because it's connected to the Price Gilbert Library and the Crossland Towers. You can study there, you get to test there, get free cookies there. <laughs> and like there are quiet rooms, graduate study area, collaborating spaces. And it's right next to the architecture building. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Karina, what's on your background? My background, it's actually a planet skyline. It's, I wouldn't say it's like a picture from the ground level, but it actually reminded me when we had um, evening classes, especially last semester that we were on East Architecture and from the windows, we could actually see the skyline, which was pretty nice. Absolutely. Devaki, how about you? So this is the bench line behind me. Uh, so it's a it's very close to uh, not very close, but it's it's kind of walkable from campus, and it's a really nice. It's it's developing and becoming larger and larger. It's a it's a retrofit of an old uh, rail line into a park. So it's it's a lot of it's a very fun hangout uh, spot uh, for all of us. So it's, it's nice and fun to be there. It, the Beltline is also, I mean, a bit of a brag project for Georgia Tech because it was, it started as a thesis project uh, by Ryan Gravel, who was a dual Master of Architecture and Master of City Planning uh, graduate. We didn't yet have the MSUD, but it really was the urban design program. And his thesis said, you know, we've got all these rail lines that aren't being used anymore and there's that there's this loop 22 mile loop we could turn that into a transit line we can also make it a, a linear park and it is not completely paved yet but getting very close and it's really a 
considered the most transformative brownfield project, one of them in the world. Uh, and it's, yes, attracting bike-oriented development now along the Beltline. It's a fabulous project to have right in our backyard. And, you know, I try not to uh, pressure the students too much of say, okay, so which of you is going to come up with the next big transformational project as your independent study? <laughs> but um, Ryan has set a fabulous example for us. So Jenny Lynn, tell us where you are. Hey, I'm at, um, at Hinman, which is one of the architecture buildings. This is where we have a lot of our studios. Um, and it's just, it's a great space. I love it actually. Um, renovated historic building. And I've, I don't know if you've noticed, I've also had no background, which gives you a little glimpse of the gorgeous Atlanta spring weather. So I wanted to put a pitch in for that as well. Beautiful, absolutely. Athelia. Yes, so this is the Hinman Research Building, and this is where we uh, spend, uh, if not most, all of our time there. Um, and yeah, that's that's where our studios are, and we are, uh, and that's right next to the Price Gilbert Library. So we keep shifting. If if it's studio work, then where most of the time we have uh, long hours in the studio, or or we just go to the library if we just want to do some alone reading assignments and stuff like that. And the library does have a good coffee shop right oh, up the ground oh, yes, floor. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the Hinman building behind Athelia is that's what it looks like on the outside. And then Jenny Lynn, if you go back to showing the inside, um, that that's, is, is helpful to see. And um, so Lubin, tell us about, about a little about Virginia Highland. Why do you go to Virginia Highland and what's there? I picked Virginia. I used to live in Virginia Highlands, and my friends still live there, uh, and I find that I miss it. So this is one of the older neighborhoods, I guess, one of the first suburban uh, style neighborhoods in Atlanta, and it's still got houses that are split up into multiple units, actually, uh, which is rare for Atlanta. Um, and it's a place where you can find maybe cheaper housing if you're looking for off-campus housing. Uh, it's it's close to the Beltline, it's close to Piedmont Park, and it's got its own nodes of, of shops and restaurants and bars and stuff. So there's a lot to do. It's kind of a midway point. The only thing is, it's not got rail transit. You have to take the bus to Georgia Tech, or if you have a bike, that would be that would be great too. Easy bike ride, absolutely. So uh, Shima and Luke, if you're still around, can you turn on your screens? Because I think Shima had the Candida building. The Candida building on the Georgia Tech campus is a remarkable building. It is the, it meets the living building challenge. It's one of nine in the entire country. And it's the only example in the Southeast of a, of a regenerative building. It generates more energy and more water than it uses. And it's right on campus and a really fantastic, um, a, a great space but also just a fantastic learning opportunity um, and, and has some innovations that are quite unique, including the bathrooms. Uh, so lots of reasons to come to Georgia Tech. And with that, I just um, want to encourage attendees, get in touch. We hope Georgia Tech is the right fit for you. Um, look forward to seeing you here in Atlanta and Robin and I are perfectly happy to answer any questions, and I'm happy to connect you with any of the individual students if you have, if you would like to, you know, connect and just talk one-on-one -on -one with any of the students. And there's more students, so this was just, but, uh, so, uh, you know, if you have any really spe specific questions, we can get into that at another time. So, thanks very much. Bye-bye.